Valentine's Day, a day of love and darkness and misery and beheadings and chocolates. Yes, all of that is involved with Valentine's Day. And there's also a lot to be attributed to it in regards to marketing, as we know. So I want to talk about this because as someone who works with people as far as the identity shift and getting them to make that shift, love is one of the most powerful things we could ever really harness. But in this day and age, are we doing it right? That's what I want to talk about. But I also want to talk about Cadbury because Cadbury is responsible for a lot of what we know today in marketing and brand. Because let's start at the beginning. In the very beginning, Valentine's Day or St. Valentine, one of the original Valentines. And Valentine as a name was something of commonality among Catholics, right? And so during the Roman era, the Romans outlawed marriage for Catholics. It was illegal. No one was allowed to get married. So St. Valentine's Day, or not Valentine's Day, St. Valentine said, screw this. We're going to do this and we're going to do it illegally. And so it ended up as a rebellion kind of thing to... You know, if you wanted to do this and you do this thing out of the name of love and you're going to face death and adversity. And unfortunately, that ended up many years later for the other Valentine on his deathbed or not deathbed, but right before he and his missus got beheaded or his, his love that he betrothed got beheaded. He signed his last letter to her, your Valentine. Dark, I know, but... It is the power of love and the things that's capable of, of what we're capable of. So let's move into the symbols of this because there's two different symbols. There's the symbol of the heart as we know it as the, you know, love. And then we've got the other symbol, which is Cupid, really. So let's start at Cupid. Cupid, originally, during the Greek era, before the Athenians, the symbol of Cupid, as we know now, is just this nice little baby. But where did it start? It started out with him being almost like the body of Adonis, a Greek god, one of the most powerful Greek gods there was. And what he had with two arrows, he had two arrows and one dipped in gold, one dipped in lead. Lead would just stew hate, repulsiveness. But when you were shot with that gold arrow, you were just overrun with just elation, emotion, and just you were enthralled, right? And he would actually go out there causing chaos. And he would shoot one person with the gold and the person he shot that they were falling in love with, he shot that person with the lead. So there was just this turmoil. So from this power of love, the Athenians were like, screw this. As they took over and the Athenian empire grew, the, Ath the Athenians were like, uh, no, let's, let's change this sexy stud who has the power to do all kinds of ungodly things or godly things in that sense let's go ahead and make him a baby so that's where we have the symbol now as far as babies are concerned and that comes back to the symbolism but the depth of love itself but then what about the actual heart symbol itself the heart symbol was actually it comes from different things and from the greeks the greeks actually had a plant it was a large fennel plant and that plant would resemble the heart and they would actually that was actually the heart of or the the plant was actually the symbol of athena as well and so one of the things about this plant was that the plant was used as a contraceptive and a very effective one and so that was one of the symbols for them but then the symbol took on different uh ideas in areas where aristotle he ended up creating the idea of the heart and as they tried to illustrate his description of biology what he ended up doing was describing it with four four quadrants you know the valves and a dent in the top and that's how they drew that and if you look at aristotle's original or the scientists drawing aristotle's uh, information that's what happened but then there's much more crude representations of it some people just equate it to the buttocks and the breasts and we're looking at it that way. But from all of this, how did chocolate become part of what we know today as Valentine's? Well, actually, the Cadbury Company, the Cadbury Eggs, they ended up creating what we know today as what's synonymous with this whole thing with chocolate and love. And back in the day when Cadbury was actually creating the company, when Mr. Cadbury was still around, 
they were trying to replace alcohol and get people to don't consume alcohol. And they got them to do that by creating chocolate drinks. And chocolate drinks were all the rave back in that era. And one thing that he did was started creating edible chocolate bites. And so now we have this whole representation of Valentine's Day with chocolates. And that's where the history comes from. But there's so much symbolism in this. And there's so much symbolism in brand. And with Valentine's Day and love, and this is one of the things that I love teaching uh, people is understanding love within themselves. And it's one of the most important things because when we are channeling and we're looking to attract love into our life or be just be in that emotion, that state of feeling love, it comes from us. It comes first from us, not from someone giving us love. Because when we are not loving ourselves completely, that means we're stealing fuel out of someone else's gas tank, taking their love for us and giving it to ourselves, but it's coming from their source. And for us to really fully embody love, we need to take ourselves out of the idea that we have to get it from somewhere else. And love is unconditional, regardless if you're a parent or not. Reason being is that you don't have to, you know, if you make it a contract, then it's not love. It's just a contract. It's an expectation. Love is something that you have to be. Love is a verb. And we have to act on those emotions. And when we act on the emotions of love, we are acting on compassion, forgiveness, acceptance, and all these things. But we have to give it to ourselves first. When we give it to ourselves first, we change the AM channel that we've been listening to. We change it to an FM channel, Love 105.7. And then we start channeling and embodying what it means to be loving. And then that way we can actually open ourselves up to love and vulnerability, which is power in itself. So that's a brief history on Valentine's Day. And another kind of motivational thing for you guys. All the love. It's your boy, Justin. I'll see you guys later. Talk to you soon.